Right now on News 3, Governor Walker and Superintendent Tony Evers go head to head in their first televised debate before next month's election. And we'll head to Milwaukee. The Brewers return home. It is a must win. Game six. This is News 3 at 10. Thanks for joining us tonight. A big debate in Madison. Governor Scott Walker goes face to face with his Democratic challenger Tony Evers in the first of two debates before next month's election. We have team coverage tonight. Rose Schmidt with the highlights of the debate and Jessica Arp who was on the panel asking the candidates questions. Let's start with Rose with a closer look at what topics were touched on tonight. Charlotte Governor Walker and Tony Evers were not afraid to trade jabs tonight over a number of key issues in this race, including education, taxes, health care and roads. But the debate Absolutely. kicked off with questions of credibility in light of news that four of Walker's former cabinet secretaries are criticizing him. And today Walker accused Evers of plagiarizing part of the Department of Public Instruction's budget request. But both candidates shrugged off these questions. I'm not afraid to have people with diverse opinions in my cabinet. For years, I had a cabinet member who wanted to raise the gas tax, and I told the voters clearly I would never raise the gas tax without an equal or greater reduction elsewhere. If this is the best Scott Walker has, he doesn't have much, I'll tell you that. We dropped a few, um, a few uh, citations from the back pages of a budget. We talked to the people involved. It was, it was a mistake, and they fixed it about whether they'll support a key issue in this debate was roads with news that Wisconsin has some of the worst in the country. Evers is criticizing Walker's lack of action while Walker says Evers will hike up the gas tax to pay to fix them. Uh, Tony said the day after the primary right here in Madison everything's on the table. He was asked does that include a dollar gas tax gallon excuse me a dollar a gallon gas tax increase. He said everything's on the table. A dollar a gallon is ridiculous. It's never going to happen. But let's go back to what doesn't work. Scott Walker's policies. Scott Walker has drawn a line in the sand around transportation, and as a result, our roads are crumbling. Another top issue was health care. Walker says Wisconsin can protect people with pre-existing conditions without keeping the Affordable Care Act. But Evers supports the ACA and is encouraging Walker to drop out of a lawsuit that would repeal it. They also discussed their plans to fund schools two-thirds of their total costs, which they both say they will do without raising property taxes. Rose Schmidt, thank you. Well, this is the first look we've had in this campaign of these two candidates head-to-head. -head. We know more tonight about where they stand on some issues. Chief political reporter Jessica Arp joins us now with some of what we're learning about these two candidates. Well, yeah, one thing that I think that we saw in this debate was simply the experience that they have in doing it. Governor Walker is very comfortable in these settings. He's even debated on a national stage. Tony Evers is a lifelong educator, and he hasn't frequently, frequently been in these debate situations. But we were interested as a panel tonight in learning more about their stances on issues and, of course, that credibility discussion that we started yeah they both with. had some things that they've had to answer to in the last uh, day or so how do you think they handled those those questions when it comes to their credibility well I think how Rose phrased it that they're shrugging it off is a pretty fair way to put it here I think that both of these candidates see that this is a major issue that voters could make decisions about there's probably nothing that goes more to the heart of whether you should choose a candidate than when they're, whether they're credible and whether and how they manage the departments that they manage which is why we wanted to ask about this I think in both cases here you're seeing they're sort of saying these are mountains out of molehills you're seeing uh, you know this is this is not as big as it seems to be I think we'll have to see as the weeks go on here whether this is something that voters themselves really seem to care a great deal about. Jess, what major issues did we see on the issues tonight? Well, I do think there were some pretty substantial differences. One of the things brought up, uh, Rose brought up about health care, that was a, a big difference, how they want to handle pre-existing conditions and where they stand on the Affordable Care Act. There were a number of questions we talked about immigration and we saw them fall very differently on sides of including whether DACA students should be given uh, uh, in-state tuition, how we should handle dairy farmers and immigrant labor that work on farms. And, and of, of course, roads and property taxes. There's a lot of push-pull there. 
on what they think they would do, what they're promising to do, what they're accusing the other one that they are mm -hmm. going to do. So I think for voters, it's it's sort of sorting out what are those differences, where do they fall on those lines, and I think we're going to keep trying as we continue our coverage in the next couple of weeks to help people sort those out about where they stand. And they have more debates ahead and next week, right? That's right. Next week, Friday, we'll see and we'll see them again, and that mm -hmm. will be the only other time that we'll see them before election yeah, it's day. It's coming up fast. I mean, we got mm -hmm. some decisions. Hopefully, that that debate can help people make decisions tonight. Great job on the panel tonight as well, Jessica Arb, our political reporter. Jessica, thank you. Former President Obama. Obama coming to Wisconsin next week campaigning for Evers along with U.S. Senator Tammy Baldwin and other Democratic candidates. The Democratic Party of Wisconsin says he'll travel to Milwaukee. That'll be next Friday, October 26th. President Trump, by the way, will also be in Wisconsin next week. He'll be holding a rally near Wausau on Wednesday. And Madison Mayor Paul Soglin says he will now run for re-election after all, three months after he said he would not. In a video released today, he says he's looking ahead and there's a lot he says he'd like to finish. Mayor Soglin joins seven other candidates in this race. The primary is February 19th. The general election set for April 2nd. I want to give you a quick update. Brewers right now on the field at Miller Park taking on the Dodgers. This is game six of the National League Championship Series. The Brewers are out to an early lead, five to two, and the crew got four of those runs in the first inning. And it goes without saying today is a big day for Milwaukee fans. Our Adam Duxter is there with more. Now, when I came down to Milwaukee today, I expected to find some very excited Brewers fans. And while I did, I also found other fans as well, including some of the most devoted tailgaters you'll meet today. Despite Game 6 of the NLCS in the opening game in the Milwaukee Bucks New Arena, dozens of fans camping downtown weren't there for sports at all. Rather, they were tailgating for a 21 Pilots concert. That isn't until tomorrow. Some have been tailgating since Wednesday and say they've been getting plenty of attention from those driving by. People have been pull, like pulling up to the stoplight, rolling down their windows, opening their doors, asking, <laughs> asking where and what we're doing, like what we're camping for. Funk says the excitement surrounding either sports game tonight still doesn't match the excitement she feels about seeing her favorite band in person tomorrow night. And whether fans in Milwaukee are here today for the Brewers, the Bucks, or just here for the music, one thing stays in common. They all say this is an exciting time to be in Milwaukee. In Milwaukee, Adam Duxer, WISC News 3. And Jay Wilson will have an update later on in sports. Sun Prairie will be celebrating the official reopening of its downtown tomorrow, and it is the first time a major event in the city since the deadly explosion in July. That'll be from 4 p.m. until 9 tomorrow. The city will come together for a downtown is open celebration and fundraiser. The idea is to get everyone to visit the downtown area to support the businesses near that disaster site. Homecoming Friday for the UW, getting ready for tomorrow's football game against Illinois at Camp Randall this evening, the annual homecoming parade and fill the hill day on Bascom Hill covered in pink flamingos as a fundraising effort for the university. This tradition dates to 1979 when it was actually a prank pulled off by some students. Get those Mega Millions tickets out. Here are the winning numbers. 15, 23, 53, 65, 70 and a mega of seven. The jackpot now over one billion dollars. If tonight wasn't your lucky night, the Powerball drawing is tomorrow, and that jackpot is nearing $500 million. There is more to come tonight at 10. When we come back, more chances for rain this week, and we'll have your updated forecast, including what to expect for the Badgers' homecoming game tomorrow. And this Friday night at News 3 at 10, just getting started. News 3's Kevin Lewis with all your Prep Mania playoff highlights. Coming up next.
A lot of alums in town for the big homecoming game, and Gary Canalti joins us backyard weather patio with a look at what we can expect tomorrow of the game. Gary? Two words, bundle up. <laughs> it's going to be chilly out there. Let's start out by taking a look at that Badger forecast. Of course, they play Illinois for their homecoming game. Kickoff 11 a.m. at Camp Randall Stadium. And yes, those are snow flurries you see in the background there. Uh, we could see some rain showers mixed with a few flo uh, flurries uh, through uh, maybe the first half of the game. I think we'll see a little more sunshine toward the second half. Uh, but temperatures are going to stay chilly, probably staying in the lower 40s. Now, the Brewers should have another game tomorrow night uh, against the Dodgers. They're uh, game seven of the NLCS, and it's also going to be very chilly for those heading to Miller Park. Uh, game time uh, has been moved up to 7.09 now, and uh, the uh, game time temperature will be right around 40 degrees. Temperatures will be in the mid-30s by the end of the game, so tailgaters bundle up. And then, of course, we have a meteor shower uh, this weekend, the Arenid uh, meteor shower. Uh, the peak will be Saturday and Sunday evenings. Look to the east and southeast. But unfortunately, we're going to have a rather large moon, so that will, moonlight will obscure at least some of the meteors. But you can see up to 20 meteors per hour, and weather should not be a factor. We'll see plenty of uh, clearing, and uh, that should allow uh, you to see the, uh, the meteor shower pretty easily. Time lapse in the WISC Skycam. Not a lot of sun today, some showers this morning, a few breaks in the clouds uh, this afternoon, but then the skies started to clear out close to sunset. Live view from the Edgewater Skycam in downtown Madison. Skies have actually cleared out pretty nicely. The almanac for today shows our high temperature made it up to 55 degrees after starting out at 48. But right now we're at 50 with clear skies. Winds are out of the west at 3 miles per hour. High temperatures today in the 60s in the western part of the state where there was a little more sunshine. 50s to the east, but colder air is starting to move into northern Minnesota. And you can see those winds shifting around to the northwest. And that's what will bring in the cooler air for tomorrow. For tonight, clearer and colder uh, for most of the night. And then it will turn cloudy with a chance of a shower toward morning. Low temperature dropping to 38. Tomorrow a shower or flurry chance in the morning, then turning partly sunny, windy and chilly in the afternoon with highs only in the mid-40s. Future track shows the clear skies giving way to some clouds and perhaps a stray shower by early tomorrow morning. The showers could be mixed with a couple of flakes of snow before we turn partly sunny in the afternoon. High temperatures only in the mid-40s. For tomorrow night with clear skies, temperatures will tumble into the middle 20s and look for high temperatures on Sunday to remain in the upper 40s with southwesterly winds. 7 to 10 day forecast, temperatures in the lower to middle 50s for much of next week. It'll be dry with plenty of sunshine for the first half of the week some shower chances toward next weekend, maybe even mixed with a few flakes of snow. Level one of the high school football playoffs, a win or go home situation for those left standing. We start with a big eight rematch. Sun Prairie handled Middleton 35-7 two weeks ago. Want a little payback. Cardinals versus Cardinals carrying the flag, of course. To 64 yard completion. The Cardinals in red. Sun Prairie in business. Touchdown on the ground. And I don't use the word ensuing except after touchdowns in football. Watch this. The catch. The wait. I did this at recess all the time, like in junior high. It was awesome. Never in any game that mattered. How about 97 yards later? Yes. I would dance as well. Middleton trying for some payback. They would not get it. Stone Prairie advances in a closer game this time around. 42-36 the final in the Cardinal battle. Kobe Gate champion Madison Memorial hosting Hamilton. Everybody gets their own head on a stick. Chargers ball, Jackson Kolath. Running right, slides, scores for the touchdown. Seven, nothing, Chargers. And Hamilton again. Eric Arado to Josh Muleman's. 35 yards later, he is dragged down inside the five. That would set up a short touchdown run. Hamilton was up 21 nothing. Spartans put together some offense in the second half, but not nearly enough. They're eliminated after an 8-1 regular season, 35-21, the final there. Verona hosting Arrowhead. The Wildcats dug themselves a hole in the first half, trying to dig themselves out. The Warhawks not interested in that. Josh Nielsen takes the pitch, running away from us yet again. Gets hit. Keeps the legs moving. 17-yard touchdown, 35-14, Arrowhead on top. Play of the night nominee for Verona. You see there, they would need many more. Adam Bex, Hawken Anderson, one of the best offensive players in the state, makes the catch, refuses to go down. 
and refuses to still go down. 33 yards later, he actually will go down, but Arrowhead cruises in level one, 63 to 21. The final there. A couple of more Big 8 teams in Division 1 playoffs. Fond du Lac, no problem. They stay undefeated. They take care of LaFalle at 56 to 14. And Kettle Moraine downs Janesville Craig 36 to 6. The final there. Reigning Division II champion Wanakee's unbeaten, scoring 50 points per game. Haven't had a real test all season, taking on Baraboo tonight. And Thunderbirds looking for some payback for an earlier loss. Maybe an exit to Upset City. Jared Wolf has other ideas. I was taught to share, but sometimes you need to be selfish in the red zone. Touchdown, 7 0, Wanakee. Then Wolf decides to share. Hands to Will Ross. Makes his way into the purple turf. 13-0, Wanakee started slow in this game. Baraboo was hanging tough. Stay on the ground, Evan Zwettler runs right, cuts back middle, scores from 13 yards out. Warriors win 27-0 to stay undefeated through level one. 9-0, Monona Grove hosting a Stoughton team that stumbled down the stretch. Start of the third, Quinn Arnott picked off Aaron Ethan Beechner. It was nine, nine seconds left in the third. Jordan Bishop going up top. Peyton Spaulding, touchdown. Yeah, coach got it right. Monona Grove played tough tonight, and they can rack up points when they want to. Trey Loken going to do some things on special teams. Stoughton couldn't get the offense going. MG wins 37-7, the final there. Oregon's won six straight. Talk about playing well at the right time, taking on Lacrosse Central first quarter. Oregon's Nolan Look, play action, lobs it. Mason Gredner back in the end zone for the touchdown. Panthers up early, seven to nothing. Just three minutes later, across central driving. Johnny Davis, Stephen Cross for the touchdown. Eight yards out. We're all tied at seven. Next possession for the Panthers. Fourth and goal. Oh, you go for it. The touchdown. But Lacrosse Central rallies back and defeats Oregon. 26-23 the final. The Red Raiders will take on Monona Grove next week. A couple other Division II scores. Watertown, big winners over Whitefish Bay, 47-7 the final there. And DeForest, a touchdown better than Holman to advance to the Level 2 playoffs. Division Three, McFarland taking on Pewaukee. Second half, Pewaukee on fourth down. McFarland's 35. Oh boy, Pirates fumble the ball. Spartans get it. They lead 21-7. Oh, special teams being special. Josh Geisel Pirates take over deep in Spartan territory. Leads to this. A little play action. Brady Solomon, TJ Chadwick for the score. But too much Pewaukee tonight as they go on the road and get a win at McFarland. 22-21, the final score. More Division Three scores. Mount Horror Barneveld scored with 44 seconds to go to take care of Berlin. 17-14 to advance to the next round of the playoffs. Catholic Memorial, no problemo. 45-7 the final over Jefferson. We are going nowhere. Division four, five, six, seven, coming at you after the break. You're watching Prep Mania's Playoff Edition.
Reigning Division IV champion Lodi missed out on the Capital Conference title after losing the final two games of the regular season. One of those losses to Lake Mills, who they got to host tonight for a shot at a little revenge. Hellcats with the ball, Adam Moen, Matt Johnson, deep into Lodi territory then. Moen takes it, quarterback keeper, Lake Mills down 10-7. Lodi, the Blue Devils respond. They've been in the situation before. Quinn Faust goes deep, finds Riley Faust. It's family affair, coming right at you. Tiptoe the sideline, get in the end zone for the touchdown, and Lodi wins 17 to 13, the final over the LCATs. Beloit Turner trying to take down eight and one Lakeside Lutheran. Lakeside Lutheran played the game of the week last week, and they were really, really good. Jake Monis airs it out. Will Denoyer for the score. Warriors up seven, they wouldn't stop. Next possession, Lakeside Lutherans. Carter Bukta powers his way through the middle. Yeah, Beloit Turner's defense had some holes, and Lakeside Lutheran found them. Hanging the goose egg, 42 0 the final as they gallop their way into level two. More Division IV scores. Edgerton, a winner over Watoma, 42 18. And River Valley, 20 points better than Mauston, 27 7. Division V, Nuglaris Monticello traveling to Prairie du Chien. PDC kicking off. The scoring in this game, Tyler Smock tiptoes and finds his way to the end zone for the touchdown. Nuglaris Monticello would have an answer. Connor Siegenthaler, tight spiral. Zach Feller, all by himself. Glarus Monticello wins 28 to 24, the final in level one. More Division Five scores. Horicon Eustisford hangs the zero on Belleville Mayville, 35 to six winners over Palmyra Eagle and Lake Country Lutheran. Didn't feel like giving any points tonight. 31 zip over Marshall. Division Six, Darlington. Hoping the clock doesn't strike midnight against Melrose Mindoro. Everyone plays nice to start. We know how it finishes. First quarter, Mustangs defense off to a good start. James Pollens, oh ball. Mel Min, great field position. Darlington would put up a stand though. Carson Lobel. We call that a TFL. Tackle for a loss. Mel Min unable to capitalize after a turnover. Darlington, the win. They advance to level two, 15 to 13, the final. Cuba City taking on Wazika Stupin Seneca, the All Hyphen Bowl. Cubans go to the air. Andy Clendenen goes deep. Braden Holzemer the catch. Oh, nice sidestep. Part of a wild night as Cuba City had to go to overtime. We couldn't stay because we have a 10 o'clock show to do. 35 34, Cuba City wins in OT. More Division VI. Cambridge stays unbeaten. 34 to 7 winners over Dodgeland. Racine Lutheran, Edges, Pecatana Arkyle, Marcus Sand beats Lourdes Academy, Mineral Points, Double Nichols on Ozaki, 55 to 28. Lancaster runs past Brookwood and Fenimore easily over Cochrane Fountain City, 48 to 12, the final score there. Division 7, Blackhawk keeps things rolling. They've been playing well all season, 62 to 13, the final over Randolph. They want to be called Johnson Crick. I'm calling them Johnson Crick as long as they keep winning. 22 to 6, the final score in level one. Benton Scales Mound 35 to 7 winners over Fall River. Potosi Cassville got to go with the slash 51 points tonight and Highland a shutout as they also advance to the level two playoffs. National League Championship Series. Game number six. If you're watching me, thank you for taking the time out to watch me. Brewers up 5 2 on the Dodgers. They had four consecutive hits in the bottom of the first inning. The Dodgers have not answered. Dodgers lead the series 3 to 2 with the Brewers hang on to win game seven tomorrow night will be played at Miller Park. Jay, Melissa, Caroline, Kim, Stephanie, Dave, Allison, everyone else we didn't see putting the show together. Thank you for your hard work tonight. What do you say we do it again for the level two next week if I don't pass out? I'm down. Stick around. We have one more break after this, and then we will wrap things up.
Gary, is your final check of your forecast? Um, pretty quiet out there right now. There are a couple of showers moving into northwestern Wisconsin. By the time they reach us, they can be mixed in with a few flurries of snow. That'll be mainly in the morning tomorrow. Highs only mid-40s tomorrow, upper 40s on Sunday. Cool for next week, mainly dry until the end of the week. Some shower chances may be mixed with a few flurries by the next weekend. Need the Brewers to hang on, right? Yeah, so they want to have a game seven tomorrow, which would be like no and fingernails they, left. And they move that up to seven. <laughs> have a good weekend. Making plans that are weather dependent? Get an accurate 12 hour, even a 10 day forecast. Download the Channel 3000 First Alert Weather app and start planning.